Well, hello everyone and welcome to First Baptist Church to our downtown campus. Once again, so glad that you are with us today whenever you are viewing this. Hope it is a special time for you. Hope that you've gained some insight into God's Word. Hope that, especially on this very amazing day, we want to celebrate our moms. So grateful for all that you've done. So grateful for the impact that you have made on your children and maybe your grandchildren at this point in time. Who knows? But you are a very special breed. There is no one. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world, doesn't it? <clears throat> you think of that Jesus' mother. She told her son, go and make some of the best wine that's ever been made. And Jesus followed the wishes of her mother. A very special moment in the scripture. You know, in... <clears throat> On the special day called Mother's Day, which is always falls on Sunday, it is a time where most pastors will take their congregations to Proverbs 31 and they will lay out this beautiful and this amazing picture of the virtuous qualities of, of, of a near perfect woman. And I think sadly, in our day and time, the, <clears throat> in the world in which we live, we find very few of those to which we can actually see in real time. It is an extremely lofty view of a woman, an extremely lofty view of what a mother is to be, almost impossible. Now, the scripture almost never makes those same references to fathers because it'll never happen in our lifetime. But the qualities of a virtuous woman are brought to bear uh, from Proverbs 31 on so many congregations on Mother's Day. And I wanted to do something totally different today. You know, it's kind of like those, um, th those airbrushed models. Uh, we all love to see them on the front pages of those uh, fashion magazines in all of their beauty and adorned with the finest clothing. Uh, known to man at that moment in any given time, and yet even those fashion models know that that's not really them. There's a story I, I heard of an interview with a fashion model who did not even recognize herself on the cover of a magazine, even though she had just recently done the photo shoot. The individual had been so airbrushed and all of her flaws and imperfections on her skin, maybe it's a freckle, in the wrong place or you know maybe there's a scar from her childhood or something and, and it all gets airbrushed over and and there's this thinning uh, photoshop software that can make everyone look perfect but we ultimately know that you know that's really not the case you know the one who reads Proverbs 31 often walks away with the idea that a woman is uh, someone who looks like a movie star, has the political savvy of a Washington lobbyist, the PhD of a quantum physicist, the cooking abilities of a master chef at the Food Channel, the sensitivity of Mother Teresa of the Catholic Channel, the business sense of the Fortune 500 executive on the Fox Business Channel, the stamina of an Olympic athlete over on ESPN, right? And the great grace and spirituality of the Virgin Mary herself. It's just impossible. And though we all ought to live and ascend to the ideal, you know, we're all supposed to be reflections of Christ, whether male or female, mother or father, husband or wife, Boy or girl, we're supposed to be reflecting the image of Christ through our lives. So that is the lofty ideal. And of course, we ascend to that as followers of Jesus. We, we don't compare ourselves to the lowest common denominator. We try to live righteously. We try to rise high and, and to, to aim high so that we might in some way live up to that standard that God has established, that we should live our lives. Now, we ultimately know that we're all sinners, we're all flawed, we all have these spiritual uh, or sinful freckles on, our, on ourselves, and, and we've all messed up, and that's why Jesus came to die. And in doing so, he offers us his love and grace that covers our sin, that washes away our sin. 
which is a wonderful and beautiful idea. But, but there are some things about mothers that I want us to see today, and I want us to see it today from an unlikely source. It almost seems unimaginable that I would even dare to compare motherhood to this individual because sadly what we seem to almost always know about this Old Testament character named Rahab is that she was a prostitute in uh, Jericho, a nation state, a group of people living in the land that God had promised Abraham's forefathers to live in. She's not a portrait of any kind of morality and virtue. She is, even in Jericho society, considered a lost cause. She's living on the outskirts of the, the wall of Jericho, the scripture tells us. A very vulnerable place to be. Yet she does something amazing. And in doing so, it leads her in some series of fortunate events in her life to become a, an adopted child of God to the Jewish people. And she ends up becoming a very important part of the story of Christ because Christ, backing up in his ancestral line, backs right up to Rahab. This unlikely mother. It's hard. Tough and tender, wise and warm. A mother must be all things to all of her family in all ways at all times. And anyone who's ever watched a mom in action knows that there is no more demanding a career nor a more endangered one in today's society. We could look at so many moms today, whether it be the mother of Moses who sacrificed to give her son away and how God used over time this change in Moses' familial raising to have a voice with the Pharaoh of Egypt. We could look at the mother of King Lemuel, who is, in fact, the portrait Many believe of the Proverbs 31 woman who raised her son Solomon. And we can look at the near perfect portrait of motherhood through Jesus' mother Mary. This incredibly faithful woman who carried the Christ child and raised him in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Helping him, though it seems to be that he always knew, helping him to truly discover and become Christ Jesus, the Savior of the world. And yet we know, honestly, motherhood, Mother's Day can be a difficult time for many people. I mean, right? Maybe your mom has gone on to be with the Lord and this is a very tearful day for you. Maybe it was recently. We're praying for you and we're very sorry for your loss and we hope that today is a very special and meaningful time to you through the memories through which your mother lives on in you. It could be that, you know, sadly, being raised by your mom was a, a tough time in your life. You didn't have a perfect mom. You stand in line, most don't, but maybe she was a, just especially poor at being a mother. You know, maybe she tried. Maybe she loved you in your own way, but you certainly don't feel it today. And the idea of coming to a day like today to celebrate moms is something that you kind of tiptoe through, even wondering whether it should be done at all. But we're thinking of you, and we are hoping and praying for you that if in some way, maybe you are a mother, or maybe you're mother and grandmother, maybe. Maybe you're yet to be a mom, but you, you want to be, but there's fear and trepidation in doing so because you don't want to pass on what maybe you feel your mother passed on to you. Maybe she did. We know that it can be difficult. 
some mothers have to go it alone, don't they? Do what really should be done through a loving relationship with father and mother. Listen, if you're a single mom and you're doing your darndest and you're having a tough time at it, I want you to know how much we love you and we pray for you. We pray for our single moms often. We want to help you in any way we can. If there's something that you need from us, maybe it's just to simply let us know who you are and to offer you the promise to pray for you daily. However we can help you in any way, whatever the need may be, we will see what we can do to try to meet that need for you in your life if you need someone and you're in our community. If there's anything you ever need, reach out to us by phone or email. We're here for you. Some others are working to gain back the trust so say themselves have not been able to live up to their own child's expectations of them. Maybe it's unfair to you or maybe it's more than fair to you. So grateful that we have God's grace that forgives us. Sometimes people don't though and so today might be a hard day for you. Today I wanted to encounter this woman known as Rahab. Quick students, no, of course, that she was a prostitute, but will scratch their head and say, wait, she was a mother? How did this happen? Rahab was so much more than just a prostitute. This is what she was before she came to know the one true living God. And God has a way of completely turning your life around if you will surrender your heart and soul to Him. He will make all things new. The scripture says you're a new creation in Christ. All the old has passed away and all the new things that God wants to bring into your life will be brought into your life if you'll just receive them. The gift that comes from God, the gift of salvation. We also see one of the great recurring themes of the Bible is that God uses the unlikeliest of people to do great and mighty things for him. And in the process of using people like this, God always ends up receiving the honor and glory. They want nothing to do with the honor and glory. They want nothing to do with the spotlight or the accolades, the fame or maybe fortune. They just are honored to have been used by God to do something great, something positive, something life-affirming in this world. Sometimes those who believe they were established by God before the creation of the world to be awesome. Sometimes, not always, sometimes they are quick to take the spotlight. They are quick to turn to themselves, to thank themselves for being so awesome. But maybe they are and maybe they're not. The scripture says the highest chief end of man, the highest aim for which we can live our lives is to glorify God through his son Jesus. I want us to turn to the book of Joshua, if you would. That's in the Old Testament. The first five books of the Old Testament, by the way, are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And then we have a set of three books called Joshua, Judges, Ruth. We're going to be in Joshua, the sixth book of the New Testament. We're going to be in the second chapter. That's where we go today. I hope you'll follow along with me. Let's read it together. Joshua, the son of Nun, secretly sent two spies to go over and survey the land, especially Jericho, and they went and entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there. That's not the place to go, by the way, guys. God has sent you and Joshua, the God's great leaders, telling you to go to Jericho, and they end up at the house of a prostitute. What in the world were they thinking? Well, we often think short 
term. We often think in just what we see. God sees it all, so He sees things we will never see. We're playing to get three outs. He's playing to win the World Series, if you will, right? We look at a guy who hits a home run and say he must be fabulous rather than looking at his batting average over time to see if he really is any good or got lucky. God sees the wide picture. He sees everything from beginning to the end. One of the things he's called us to do is to live by thinking in terms not of the momentary, but in in terms of eternity. Thinking what I call long ball, long term. Brand new believer comes to faith in Jesus. They immediately leave the church building and they fall back into their sin and we go, phony, didn't mean it. Well, no, that brand new believer hasn't left the world that he once lived in and so now he's struggling in his newfound faith. Our role is to come alongside him, the scripture says, and to lift him up like stronger brothers and sisters in Christ should be doing. What do we do? We wipe our hands like Pilate and say, not my problem, not my circus, not my monkey. I leave it be. And you know what we should be doing? We should be lifting him up. That's what a mom does, by the way. Moms are often playing the long ball. They're playing long term with their children. They're of the understanding that kids are all under construction. And they won't get something the first time more than likely because, well, no one ever has before. The history of all humanity takes time, takes teaching, it takes lessons learned. Tell one child, don't touch the stove, it's hot. They'll never touch the stove, it's hot. You tell your same Uh, another child in your same family don't touch the stove they'll touch it ten times until their uh, their little fingers have scarred some are experiential and tactile some are learners through the theoretical and the principle takes all kinds moms get that it's one of the beautiful things about moms let's keep reading Went to the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there. The king of Jericho said, look for the Israelites. They've come here tonight to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent his message to Rahab. We know you have them. Bring them out. They've entered your house. They've come to spy out our land. But the woman had taken these two men and she had hidden them. She said, yes, they were here, but I don't know where they had come from. At dusk, when it was time to close the city gate, they left. I don't know which way they went. Go after them quickly. Maybe you can catch them. She knew where they were, but she knew they were also sent from God. Though she didn't have much going for her, she did have a sense of a God who was watching over that these were men sent from God, and so she protects them. The men, verse 7 says, they set out in pursuit of the spies on the road that leads to the fords of the Jordan. As soon as the pursuers had gone out, the gate was shut. Spies laid down for the night. She went up on the roof where she was keeping them. And she said, I know that the Lord has given you this land and that a great fear of you has fallen on all of us so that all of you who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We've heard how the Lord dried the water of the Red Sea For you, when you came out of Egypt, what you did at Sion and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed when we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear. Everyone's courage had failed. It was because of you, and the Lord your God is in heaven above and on earth below. I don't know about you, but that is close to giving your heart and soul to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who, by the way, one day will be sending the Christ into the world to save the world from its sin. The heart's melted because yours is the God who is in heaven. 
please swear to me by the Lord that you'll show kindness to my family because I've shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you'll spare the lives of my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them so that you will save us from death. Our lives for your lives, the men assured her. If you don't tell what we are doing, we will treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord gives us the land. So he let them down by a rope through the window for the house she lived in was part of the city wall. They escaped on their way. Now, by the time they get to Jericho, she's living on that outside wall. The walls come crumbling down. Now, we know from Scripture that for some reason, that area where her family was, was spared. What's interesting, as, they, as Gar Stang and Wood and uh, Captain Kenyon, when they went to excavate Tel Sultan, which is the, uh, the, the, the dust and remains of Jericho, they found it. Just as it was said, almost all of the walls of Jericho were torn down except one section. And as they excavated that section and they dug deep and they saw the people who lived there, kind of who they were when it comes to society, what they had left, became quite obvious that it was that area that remains on the wall that was not torn down was a red light district. Once again, archaeology confirming what we already knew to be true in Scripture. It's an interesting story. And, but look, like all those who place their faith in the one true living God, as did Rahab, the Scripture says, will be spared God's wrath. Think about this. Noah was spared from the great flood. Enoch and Jonah and the people of Nineveh were spared. The Israelites had been spared at the Red Sea. Lot was spared the destruction of the twin cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Mephibosheth was spared exile and brought into the king's palace. The disciples were spared their dead in lives to follow Jesus. The thief on the cross was spared and given eternal life in heaven rather than hell. On several occasions, we read in the book of Acts how the apostles' lives were spared. Of course, they ultimately met their faith as a martyr for Christ. But so often, their lives had been spared to carry out the message of the gospel and the purpose for their lives. The Bible says that there will be a massive rapture of the church in the last days. And ultimately, we will all as followers of Christ be spared the eternal wrath of God because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And Rahab is rescued by God, given a brand new life because of her faith in him. Rahab, a beautiful reminder that mothers aren't perfect and they don't have to be. They don't even have to pretend to be. They just have to be in concert with their husbands and most importantly, Almighty God to raise their children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord so that they leave behind them the legacy of faith that will live on in their children and then theirs, who will one day continue to carry out the great commission of Christ to the world, even as we as a church hundreds of thousands of other churches around the world continue to do every week. I want to share with you just a few things real quickly and we'll wrap this up together. I think it's interesting. This unlikely mother Rahab experienced a courageous faith in God. Listen, living the Christian faith takes courage in this day and hour. Living as a Christian mother, not perfect, imperfect, but forgiven and loved by God. It takes a courageous faith to live for God as a Christian mother. Sometimes the world will ridicule you. We have this ongoing debate right now of allowing children to be given these hormonal blockers that might rearrange their, their ideas and their functioning and might be catastrophic long term.
And those mothers or fathers are being called courageous? The Bible has another word for it. It's called evil. It takes no courage to go with a large group bound for hell, but it takes a lot of courage to go against the grain, to swim against the current, to go in that narrow way that Christ said leads to eternal life, to take that less traveled path. Virtue and morality, which means nothing without faith in God, but yes, faith in God, which leads to life abundant and eternal and leads your children and theirs to one day come to know Jesus as Savior and Lord. How incredibly important it is. The unlikely mother Rahab exercised a concerned faith in God, didn't she? She said, please let my family live. Let me live as well. She knew that God would protect her and would protect her as he always protected the Israelites. And so she asked for that same protection. It's a big, big ask. Please, God. Concerned faith, not only for herself, but for her family. That's what mothers do, isn't it? They're concerned for not just themselves. In fact, often despite themselves, to the detriment of their own life and safety, they will do whatever it takes to love and save and support their child. Thirdly is that this unlikely mother Rahab employed a confident faith in God. She didn't necessarily have faith in herself. I would imagine she wouldn't. I, I would imagine she felt as so many uh, women who are selling themselves feel that they're not of worth and so it doesn't really matter that they sleep around or that they sleep with other men for money or whatever it is. They don't feel like they're a person of worth. They don't have any confidence in themselves. And she discovered that placing her faith and confidence in God gave her life worth and value. And that's what God does when you let him into your life. When you surrender heart and soul to him, you find your true self. You find the joy and the freedom the world longs to have that seeks for it in so many desperate and sad, pathetic ways. But it is found in seeking and then finding God. You know, faith is only as good as its object. What are you putting your faith in yourself? You're putting your faith in the common momentary values of one brief time in history. Please tell me you're looking at something deeper than that. We have the wisdom of the Word of God. It's thousands of years old when you collect it all together as the Old and the New Testaments. You bring all this wisdom together and you have such a gold mine of, of treasure in your hands if you know it, if you believe it, if you read it. I know some people in our fellowship who are reading through the Bible every single day for the rest of this year. I can't imagine the things they're going to discover along their journey and the difference it's going to make in their lives. Are they going to remember it all? I, I think probably not. Are they going to remember a lot of it? I think probably a lot of them will. Are they, those things that they remember, are they going to apply them to their lives and to the everyday? I think a bunch of them will. And is it going to make a difference in their marriages, in their parenting, in the workplace, in the marketplace, in their families, in their personal lives, in their worth and value, in their understanding of their purpose for being on this planet, I think they're going to. 
The scripture says the word of God never returns void without accomplishing all that God intends. The writer of Hebrews said the word of God is is living and active and it's sharper than a double-edged blade. It, It cuts through the flesh and bone and marrow deep into the soul, those things which cannot be seen, that are not tangible, but we all know exist. It's what a godly mother does. It's what this unlikely mother Rahab did. The Bible tells us that Rahab found a a gentleman of the Jewish faith, Ammon. They had a child named Boaz. Boaz was a godly man, became very successful in farming. In fact, he was so blessed that he quite often would allow those who didn't have a lot to come and to take the leftovers as a gift to them, as a blessing to them so that they would have nourishment make them healthy and thus through Boaz's life better understand the love and grace of God he's an amazing amazing guy and Boaz meets this woman outside of the Jewish faith named Ruth who had come with her mother-in-law Naomi back into the Jewish fold Naomi's family after a series of very unfortunate tragic events Boaz takes her as his wife and the rest is history these this great story of the kinsman redeemer we read about in the book of Ruth an amazing and glorious story of redemption And how God has come to save all of humanity, not just the Israelites. Sixpence, none the richer, sings this beautiful song called Kiss Me. And it's their story of Boaz, the kinsman redeemer, and Ruth. Extremely popular song. Boaz takes a woman outside of the Jewish heritage to be his wife where has he seen that before salmon takes Rahab to be his wife read about that in I believe it's Joshua as you keep reading in Hebrews chapter 11 we find the passage of scripture that's been called the great hall of faith Several of the greatest names in all of Scripture and all of Christendom are referenced in this passage of Scripture. Yet there are only two women, oddly enough. And I know what you're thinking. Got to be that Proverbs 31 woman. Nope, (laughs) it's not. One of them is the obvious choice, Abraham's wife, Sarah, of course. Abraham, the father of God's chosen people, Israel, through whom their lineage would come to Christ, the Savior of the world. The other is, yeah, you guessed it. A young woman who, because of a series of probably very unfortunate events in her life, is forced to sell her body for money out on the unsafe wall top of the security wall around Jericho. In that one place, because of her faith in God, he rescued her, he spared her and her whole family. The scripture tells us and Rahab becomes this woman, this unlikely woman
who had exercised her great faith in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to become the model for motherhood we discuss today more than anything. However, I hope you know is it's not about the faith of Rahab. Though it was a great faith, she's in the hall of great faith in, Rome, in Hebrews 11. It's about the grace of God. You and I turn our hearts toward Him. All will be forgiven and forgotten. All will be made right with God. Life can begin fresh and new. Relationships can be restored. Health can return. Faith can grow. Life can take on whole new meaning. And when we finally breathe our last breath, the scripture says our next breath will be the perfect, majestic, glorious air of eternal life in heaven with God. Well, I hope that this has been a blessing to you. We certainly do love you. We wish all of our mothers today, whenever you're viewing this, we wish you, if you are a mom or grandmother, we are wishing you a very happy Mother's Day Hope that it has been very special for you. Hope that you feel loved and encouraged. God is with you. God has a special place for moms in his heart, just as Jesus did who was God in the flesh, just as Jesus did for his mother Mary. Never forget it. Abraham Lincoln said, no one is poor who had a godly mother. Thank you, moms. God bless.